This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me. And He's calling me to the heavenly. Be seated in heavenly places, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. To be walking in His favor and grace, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. Oh, Good morning, Father. You're listening to Wave 94.1. I am here to tell you that this is the second Monday of January 2024, and I'm happy to be here, and I hope you are too. You're listening to Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ, Servant Marcia. I've come with the word today because I soberly realize that Jesus is coming back, and that's scary. I mean, the things that Jesus mentioned in Mark 24, uh, Matthew 24 chapter, uh, is happening so fast until every single day. It seems that we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And my question is, are we ready? If you are a believer, a saint, a person that goes to church, reads your Bible, uh, I'm here to let you know that You're considered the bride of Jesus Christ. You're the church. You're the reason that the rapture is actually going to take place. Uh, The dead in Christ is going to rise, but those that are believers in Jesus and following his way, you also will be raised up. You will gather. You will be gathered together and meet Jesus in the air, and we will be with him forevermore. The, the question is, are we ready? Um, last week, January 2nd, Miami, Florida experienced what some are calling Nephilim, that um, there were huge beings that eight to 10 feet tall that just materialized at a shopping mall. Nonetheless, 100 police cops, they turned off all the lights, even turned off the uh, airport for a moment. Are we ready? Are we ready? Jesus said, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be when he returns. And I'm saying He's returning to pick his people up, those that belong to him, before the wrath of God is poured out on the world. I don't know how long the signs are going to take place, but I'm here to say, let's get ready. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. And um, I'm going to read from Matthew 24, chapter And he said, take heed that no one deceives you. Matthew 24, verse 4. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, pestilence, famines, earthquakes. But these are just the beginning of sorrows. And then they will deliver us, believers, up to tribulation, kill us. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Uh, People will betray one another. False prophets will rise up, deceive many. Lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. But he who endured to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. But when Jesus talks about, as it were, in the days of Noah, and you could hear me turning the Bible, and I hope you have yours, it forces me to go back to Genesis uh, around the sixth chapter. And it says, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of earth, and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves 
of all whom they choose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. The wickedness of man was great in the earth that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, that is explaining how it was in the days of Noah by us having the experience, us meaning mankind, particularly those in Miami last week, uh, experiencing the influx of, I guess, giants, unknown beings that seem to be spirit beings, but yet solid. I don't know what that is. Neither do you. But it is reminding us that it's very similar to what we're seeing in the Bible in Genesis 6 chapter that Jesus himself referred to and said, I will return when the conditions on earth is as they were in the days of Noah. My response to that as a believer, and so should yours be, is what do we do? Do we have unknown power? Uh, can we speak things and cause them to disappear? The word of God says to speak those things that are not as though they were. But there was a context in which he gave us those instructions. What I'm saying is that things are going to happen. Uh, what's written in the Bible and Revelations, Matthew, Daniel, it's going to happen. There's not much that we can do except to try to be ready for it. My first reaction is that I individually, I can do something and it's called repent. I can do that. I can start getting myself ready. If I'm the church, then I'm also the bride. If I'm the bride, then the bridegroom is coming to pick me up. I have to be ready. So the first thing I want to do is I want to repent of anything that I'm doing, have done, that I have not acknowledged. I want to confess. I want to uh, say to the Lord, I'm sorry. Say to myself, I want to restore anyone that I've hurt during that period of rebellion that I may have been in. And um, even the Bible tells us that if we would confess our sins, if we would repent in 1 John, it says um, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So if Jesus is coming back and in John First chapter, we said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then that means in Jesus, there is no darkness in Him either. So if He's coming back to get His own, He's coming to get those that have no darkness in them. <laughs> so if we say that we have fellowship with God, but we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as God, Jesus is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. How do we walk in the light? Because if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Walking in the light means first epistle of John, verse 9. If we confess our sins, then God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so that's the key. We must confess. So right here, right now, this moment, I say, let, I'm taking this moment. Holy Spirit, allow me, allow those in Radio Land to just stop what we're doing because Jesus could come like the next moment. And let's acknowledge that there are things in our lives. There are things that we may still be doing, but I'm saying confess your sins, repent, turn away from them and turn to God and really believe that he can cleanse us from our sins. He can um, 
forgive us of our sins and he can cleanse us from iniquity. And then he even tells us that he remembers it no more. That's what I'm doing because I believe that repentance is the first step for us getting ourselves ready for the rapture. So how do we get ready? Well, there's a marriage contract. Uh, we need to do the things Jesus told us to do. Love our enemies, pray for them, help those in need, forgive yourself, forgive others, walk in peace. And then what about making disciples? That's what we have to do. We have to make disciples. So here's some Bible verses. It says, um, the, the bride has made herself ready in Revelations, the 19th chapter, um, verse number seven. Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him for the time has come. And that's where we are for the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear for the fine linen represents, I'm going to say the righteousness of God. Okay, and that subsequently leads us to good actions and good deeds. Amen. So uh, we defeat Revelation 12. The other way that we live in getting ourselves ready is we walk by faith. We we've defeated the ways of this world by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony that we did not love our lives so much that we were not afraid to die to the way of sin and possibly even to die as martyrs. Um, the other thing is that um, we are to walk in a way where we can escape corruption that is in the world through lust, okay? We're to uh, love one another. We're to uh, prepare ourselves by walking in the fine linen that's clean and bright, uh, the righteous acts of the saints of God. Amen. Uh, even Romans 16 talks about how we are to be a helper of many and uh, of ourselves. That Ephesians 4, see, what I'm saying to you is how to get ready. Like if you're a pastor, an apostle, a prophet, you are to be equipping the saints for the work of ministry because why? It edifies the body of Christ. Uh in 1 Corinthians, it says we are to be sanctified, meaning set aside in Christ Jesus so we can be called saints, right? So um, people will look upon us and see that we're representing the kingdom of God. You cannot call Jesus Lord, Lord, and then not do the things that he asks us to do. He even tells us if uh, we are his friend, uh, it is our actions, not our words, that indicate that we are a friend of Jesus because we are obedient. Uh, we do what he commands us to do. When we see someone hungry, we give them food. If they're thirsty, we give them drink. If they're naked, we clothe them. If they're sick, we visit them. If they're in prison, we go to them. This is the righteous acts and deeds of the saints of God. This is how we get ready uh, for the Lord. We forgive, you know. Uh, we live peaceably with all men. Uh, in James, the third chapter, it says the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. And so then um, Jesus lets us know in Matthew 28 that he is given that he has all authority. Right. And that uh, we are to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So. I'm going to say today that uh, we ought to repent, call upon the name of the Lord. Um, you know, let's um, let's start walking in righteousness. And uh, I'm going to go back to First John chapter two, where it says, "By this we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments." He who says, "I know Him." but does not keep his commandments as a liar and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keep the word of God, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as Jesus did. So there's no new commandment, nothing new. Uh, the only commandment is uh, be true in God 
because darkness, that's what you're seeing. All this darkness is not going to stay here forever. It's going to pass away. And the true light uh, is what we will have at the end of days. Uh, mankind is going through uh, a period of an age that's ending. And you could call it the church age or the age of grace. And in case you don't know, you're listening to Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. And I'm trying to tell you, stop hating on each other. Stop talking about each other. Walk in love. Practice love. Uh, examine yourself daily. I'm examining myself. I'm asking God to purify me, clean me. I can't do it. And so I'm praying that you uh, understand the time and the season that we are in. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Because if you do, then the love of the Father is not in you. Because the only thing that's in the world is the love of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that is not of the Father, but it is of the world. The world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So, little children, it is the last hour. And as we have heard, the Antichrist is coming. But there's been many Antichrists. It's just that that final one is also on the way. So, let's pray. Father God, I ask you to look down upon us today. Holy Spirit, cleanse us. Uh, receive us, Lord. Father, we repent of our sins, known and unknown. Lord, we ask you to release your Holy Spirit, purify us. We walk under uh, the refreshing of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God that cleanses us, the blood of Jesus that was spilt for us, Lord, uh, as propitiation so that we can be reconciled back unto you. And Father, as you release unto us the ministry of reconciliation so that we can go abroad and we can tell others about you, Lord. Let us do this with an urgency, knowing that Jesus is indeed coming back to grab his gathering, to grab his elect, because the signs are already here. Lord, I pray for all of us, Lord, to receive your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. And may the Lord keep you, guide you, and lead you in the path of righteousness. We are the bride. Jesus is our bridegroom, and he is coming back. So we must make ourselves ready. Do not be foolish. Be a wise virgin and get that all. Get, the, get your all now while we have time. Fill yourself with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God so that when you do speak, you speak the will of God. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Bye. Anybody want to see you love?